Hi there. Hi, um, my name's Akira. Let me just uh, come up. Oh, hi, there we go. Pleased to meet you. This talk is going to be about six different backup solutions that are available for MongoDB. So this talk is for MongoDB DBAs. Whether you're looking to use backups for the first time or you have one solution now, but you want to check if other solutions are going to be better for you, this talk will give you a quick way to compare them in broad detail uh, so you'll be able to choose the right one and then focus on that later and study that later. Let me just share my presentation screen again. Okay. So uh, here's the agenda. First of all, I'm going to talk about uh, the ter some terminology that needs to be clear and uh, some general points about how MongoDB backups work. And then I'll start comparing the six different solutions. And at the end, I've got a performance comparison and a summary to give. Anyhow, let's get into it. Okay, first thing I want to make clear is the, the, what the terms logical and physical backup. I'm sure you would have heard, heard something about these before uh, as a DBA. Um, and I think pretty much everybody knows this, but just in case, um, in the case of logical backup, uh, it will use the backup tool. We use the DB, DB driver and just fetch the records as they're, as they're presented to any client application. In the case of MongoDB, of course, this means Bison documents. So a logical backup solution for MongoDB means reading the Bison documents out using a MongoDB driver and dumping the Bison, Bison documents in a file. A physical backup, on the other hand, means copying the files that MongoDB puts in its dbpath directory. Uh, so the, it's copying those files out of your backup server um, as, as they are. Um, and the files that you put there should be copied back into a dbpath directory and a node restarted uh, if you're using physical backup. Uh, of course, the term physical is not all, at all accurate. I mean, it's all binary on a file somewhere, whether it's the logical type of physical, but so physical really means using and copying the DB data underlying files. Okay, uh, another one is, may, and um, again, mostly everybody would be familiar with what this means, but uh, consistent backup means that the copy of the data is every single document in there is as it was at some particular real time. Uh, what that point in time is depends on the type of um, backup system you're using. If you're using a logical backup, it'll be the consistent time that will be restored should be the end time of the backup. That's the only uh, way it's possible. With physical backups, usually it's the start time of the backup that's being captured exactly. And there's some different cases there, but as a general rule, it's gonna be that start time of the backup. Uh, and if you're using a point in time restore, well, consistent time that you're restoring could be anything you any any point in time that's the entire point of having a point in time restore is that you can pick any time but whatever is restored every single document will be as of some as it was in reality at some point in time it, there will not be mixed time versions in there uh, another another term which again is has been heard a lot and um, pretty much everybody we should know this already is that a hop backup is a backup you take without shutting your database down. This kind of term is very much outdated when you have a distributed high availability system like MongoDB because pretty much well every single way of doing a backup leaves the DB running. Clients can still use the database live while doing it. So as a general term, hot backup covers all the backup systems we're going to uh, explain later. But just to put you on the same page as what it means when it's usually put in, for example, in a uh, marketing flyer or something like that, usually it only means a physical backup method that can, that can do it in hot or alive. Um, so, there's a kind of a disagreement here between what hot, hot backup should mean and what it's usually advertised as meaning. But uh, I'll, I'll explain that more as I get to the hot backup slide later. 
Uh, and lastly is a snapshot. Uh, this is usually people want to do at a backup. That's a snapshot. When you make a backup, it's a copy of the whole database. Um, it should be a consistent one, but more consistent is another word. Uh, there are also sometimes storage engines will provide their own snapshot uh, method. Uh, that this is not just MongoDB, this is other databases as well. A uh, storage engine snapshot is, a, is an even more uh, tightly controlled um, point in time um, copy of data. But either way, a snapshot is a whole copy of the database as opposed to incremental backups, which are changes in the data from, um, from, uh, from one minute to the next. Okay. Uh, and lastly, uh, point in time restore again, another well, well known term, but a point in time restore is not to talk about the single point in time in, uh, of a consistent backup restore. Uh, a snapshot, if you, re if you restore it, has got, should have a single consistent point in time. It's not that point in time, although that is a valid thing. A point in time restore system enables restoring to any arbitrary point in time that you want to choose uh, since your last backup. Uh, for example, if uh, a disaster happened at 11 a.m., 26 minutes and 13 seconds exactly when somebody dropped a collection they shouldn't have, you can choose not just to go to your backup, which was made at 3 a.m. this morning. You could go to exactly 11 a.m., 26 minutes and 14 seconds, one second before the bad um, operation uh, executed. The ability to go to an exact second uh, is what any, any second at all is what a point in time restore system is about. Okay, so there are things that are used in backups. Um, of course, copying the whole file is making an entire snapshot was one part of it. And um, there's different ways of doing that, which we'll come to later. Uh, the second part, uh, most important part of uh, MongoDB uh, backups is using the op log. Well, again, everybody who's joined this talk probably knows what, what an op log is, um, and you, by all means, skip ahead a minute in this presentation if you're, if you're up to date. But for its replication, MongoDB uh, creates op log. It appears as what looks like a fairly ordinary uh, collection. You can read it. Um, you shouldn't write to it, uh, you definitely shouldn't change it. Uh, MongoDB is writing into it. But every single uh, document in that is an operation that is inimpotent. It could be replayed again if needed without uh, changing the final result as you get to the end. Uh, there'll be one document after another after each with its own separate timestamp and with the operation that is being applied uh, to collections, both user collections and system collections. Uh, one after the other, uh, and they come in order. The op log is a cap collection uh, with no, officially no indexes on it at all. If you try to view indexes for the op log, you'll see nothing. But there is an enforced order. The timestamp increments and always goes forward and is never never out of order. Uh, one, op, uh, one document after the other is followed timestamp by timestamp. And those, as I say, those operations are idempotent ones, so they can be replayed. A sequence of the op log can be replayed again and again, and you'll always end up with the same result. So it's a very safe and nice thing, a similar concept to a redo log uh, as used in other databases. Okay, so this exists, and of course, secondary nodes are, are reading this and applying this uh, on, their, on their own data using the fairly internal apply ops command. They just one after the other, apply op, apply op, apply op. So that's how replication works. But it's not just an, uh, it's not just a system collection and it's not a hidden collection. You can access it freely, um, pretty much with any, any, any read permissions if you have them. So this is useful in backups because a database snapshot might not be a consistent one. Um, logical backups uh, will read documents as they go through, and as they go through, there'll be a spread of time. So when they begin, say at 2 p.m., the first documents they will read will be as they were at 2 p.m. If it takes until 2:30 p.m., um, what happens to those documents that were first read? If they were updated, they won't. That won't be in the copy. Um, the logical backs not 
the logical backup snapshot, they'll be missing. But we don't want to have documents with different time versions in the same backup snapshot. We want that to be cleaned. But what you can do is apply the copy the op log that occurred during that time and apply all the, all the operations in it uh, when you do the restore. You don't do it when you do, you so you'd make a copy of all the documents first, then you would go back and copy the op log at the same time and say that in your backup directory. And when it comes to restore, put the snapshot as it is with potentially inconsistent records and just apply the op log and that will bring them all up to an exact point in time as of the end of the snapshot. This is this is a very good thing about uh, MongoDB that the oplog is there and these, these oplog documents are just available to use. It's a very simple way to get consistent backups compared to uh, older databases. Okay. Uh, in this next slide is, is not just about restoring to the, a single consistent point of time when restoring a snapshot. Uh, it's going on to point in time restore. Uh, in this diagram here, I'm showing several different replica sets that belong to the same cluster. One replica set for the config servers and then a couple of shards. Um, the idea it, with point in time restore is to keep on capturing the op log 24 seven. Uh, make a copy of the op log in order uh, somewhere continually. So if you have to restore, you can first restore a snapshot and uh, maybe you need to use it to uh, fix the snapshot if it was uh, uh, an inconsistent snapshot. But then you can continue playing forward from the point in time that the snapshot was consistent to whatever time you like. In this case, I've put a mark to time X. Uh, in, this, in this case, you would uh, first restore the sna snapshot before it and then for every single replica set, the config server the, and the two shards here, you would keep on re replaying their separate op logs, replica set by replica set, until you reach the same point in time. That's the, that's the whole idea of a point in time restore with MongoDB. Um, another part of uh, MongoDB backups uh, is transactions. This didn't matter until um, uh, just a few years ago because until up, up to and including version 3.6, MongoDB did not have transactions. Well, the storage engine has its own transactions. I mean, it maintains things like when you update a collection, it, or it also updates an index data structure. That will be done inside the same storage engine transaction, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about transactions that users can use. They can run a command start transaction. They can write do one write and another write, and, uh, or as, there's no limit on number of writes, but uh, they could do uh, multiple writes and then commit transaction. And those multiple operations will be applied on an all or nothing basis. They will all be applied or they'll time out and just be discarded. So in version 4.2, it became possible to do this, although it only applied to you know, non sharded replica sets. And in version 4.2, it, it, it became possible even in sharded clusters. Um, so, but to get to the point, uh, transactions are multiple write ap applications that should be applied all or nothing. So if there's a restore, it should, it should apply, if it, if it applies one, it should apply the others and run a commit. If one appears, but not the others or no, or more to the point, there's no final commit transaction, they should not be applied in the end. Right. I will um, just quickly show you what a transaction looks like. This is a, a version 4.0. It just puts the multiple application, uh, the, the multiple operations in the transaction inside one oplog document. In a 4.2 distributed transaction, one that actually involves multiple shards, uh, it's going to be several different uh, uh, oplog documents. Uh, some of these are going to be to system collections, which are are fairly temporary and short-lived, um, or at least the documents for them are. Uh, but there are some which clearly look like uh, regular oplog documents, and I'll explain those. First of all, this is one of these system ones that uh, uh, is not so important. I'd like you to focus on this one here. This is an, up, an insert to the test BAS collection, 
which occurs on one shard. Uh, you can see that there's a, ten, a, ten, a transaction number field. The transaction number here is zero. Usually it's a high number, but zero is also a valid number. Uh, it has a it has its own timestamp, uh, and as well as operation, it's only marked as prepare. It, there's no commit transaction yet. On another shard, there's another um, uh, there's another operation. This one is into a different collection as happens to the test bar collection. This is also just, um, it has the same transaction number and it, it is also only in prepare mode. Here's an update into a certain, uh, into one of those uh, system collections, which, which I'm going to pass over and, and show you this op, op, op log doc. This one is actually occurs in two places. It occurs on both shards. It, it's, uh, it's exactly the same one. In particular, it has exactly the same timestamp on both shards. And this is the final, the final one that matters where the, commit, where the transaction is committed. When you have this, then you finally write, you'll finally write those prepared operations or commit them in the storage engine uh, on, on your shard. So, both of these should have exactly the same timestamp and there will be a commit transaction. Okay, this is, this is fairly detailed, but transactions are new, so I thought I'd, I would share this detail. Okay, right here. Now we come to the main part, which is where we compare the different backup options that are available. As I mentioned, there are six. Um, I haven't made a particularly uh, decorative or graphical um, uh, slide here, but, uh, we're going to talk. We're going to name them and shortly look at each of them. One is uh, probably the oldest tool that most people know, using Mongo, Mongo Dump or Mongo Restore on, on the other side. Uh, maybe the most, maybe the original one though was the method of shutting down one node and copying its files while it's stopped. This is a data at rest cop, uh, file copy situation. Uh, Another, another way, which is very similar, although it's, much, it's a more live situation, is to run a file system snapshot. Uh, I usually use uh, LVM to do this. Um, so I would create an LVM snapshot of the file system uh, while the database is still running, and then mount that snapshot and then copy the, copy the files away to somewhere else. Uh, a new tool um, uh, in the history of MongoDB tools is Pocona Backup for MongoDB. Uh, and uh, a bit before that, there was also a wide tiger, a wide tiger snapshot method, which is not, which you haven't discussed much, but again, it's a very similar system to the file system snapshot without stopping your MongoDB node. You can say, please create a snapshot copy of the files, uh, which wide tiger provides through its API. Uh, it, it will copy files out uh, while the database is still running. Um, uh, and the uh, last one here is MongoDB Ops Manager, uh, which is the biggest and most complex system. Um, uh, I put it in the middle, and there's a reason I've done that. Uh, it's because uh, it's the only one that straddles both logical and physical types. Mongo Dump or the kind of backup of MongoDB are logical systems. Uh, the the other those other three on the top right there are physical systems. And MongoDB Ops Manager provides methods that are both uh, physical and logical. So you can use either. Next, I'll give you a brief view of what each of these look like in case you've never used them before. Oh, but firstly, you might ask, why are there so many options? Well, there's no really great reason. It is feasible that all of these could have been built right into MongoDB and just run like uh, like a wide tiger snap snapshot can be run. Um, uh, it just wasn't done. Um, uh, and now that MongoDB community is not really community anymore, it's a free version and it's uh, literally, it's an open source. You can read the source, but it's not a community project that, that is accepting um, uh, patches, except ones for the most, um, you know, most serious bugs. Uh, we, we are, I don't think we'll be able to, make a single backup uh, solution that is all inside MongoDB because I don't think MongoDB is going to uh, accept those patches. In the end, we're left with a situation where 
we have so many external tools because they were quicker to provide at the beginning. So that's, I'm afraid there's just no good story. This is just how this came about. Okay, let's overview and just give you a, you know, some eyes on what it looks like. For first with the stopping a secondary method, uh, whether you can use a real, an ordinary secondary or a hidden secondary, um, uh, it's, but it's simply the idea is if you stop a, debt, a MongoDB node and restart it, the files that it has, has left when it shuts down, you should be able to restart with it. And that's, that's, that's one of the guarantees that a database system does. Well, yes, that's, that's how it works. Uh, the files, when you stop a MongoDB um, instance, are a valid, consistent view of data. They, of course, they're becoming out of date uh, every second that you don't copy them or don't restart, but they are a valid, consistent copy of files. So just stop a node, making sure you don't stop too many and making sure that the re replica set is still okay. It still has a primary, um, it still has a majority of nodes, but stop one node and just copy its file somewhere else um, into a backup server. So you can bring them back later if you want to do backup. That's, that's all it is. And so you simply stop your MongoDB, copy files. In this example, I've used uh, on copying to an object store, the S AWS S3 object store, but you can also copy it to an ordinary file server. Anyway, that's all that is. Mongo dump and Mongo restore. Uh, this is a command line tool, uh, which uh, as mentioned, being a logical system connects using database drivers. It connects to uh, uh, replica set node or it connects to a cluster through a mongos through the mongos node and it just iterates all the databases both the system ones and the user ones and then in, in each database it iterates all the collections it finds there and just reads the documents out by underscore id order and writes them into bson files now that's all it is so you you simply use that when it comes to doing mongo restore you um, point the mongo restore at a live um, MongoDB uh, replica set or cluster, and it will just insert, it will just drop all the collections and reinsert all the BSON documents one by one. Well, not one by one, it does it in batches of 100 or whatever, but it, it, it conceptually just re, re insert, reinserts all the documents one by one. So another very command line, uh, command line like solution. As is using a file system snapshot. Uh, LVM is not the only system, file system you can use to do this, but it's the most common one, so I'll focus on that. When using a file system snapshot, you really need um, either root Unix root permissions, um, or you need your Unix system administrator to spend a lot of time making sure you've got all the necessary permissions as another user to run a command like LV, the, like the LV ones. Usually an ordinary user cannot, you cannot do it. So there's some Unix level administration that's needed to, before you can use this. But when you use it, you'd use the LVM commands to create a snapshot. You'd use the standard Unix mount command to mount a read-only um, mount of that data. Then you would copy the data somewhere else. Then you'd unmount that the snapshot and just throw it and then delete it and then, uh, the file system can get that uh, those box that box space back again for other needs or future backups. So, again, the file system method is a very command line system, uh, but it more. To, uh, but I wanted to point out it really requires a higher higher than average Unix admin privileges. MongoDB Ops Manager is it's kind of hard to show, but one thing that's clear is it has a has a has a GUI it has a nice uh, web server based GUI that you can use. It also has agent processes that run on each of your servers. These agents can do automation, which is sort of off topic, but is, is part of how MongoDB Ops Manager does it, uh, as well as doing backup and uh, alerting and so forth. So these agents must run on every single server um, and you can control the backup. Also, you must set up a backup location, uh, but that applies to, of course, to any method. Uh, but anyhow, you can control it and you can see the list um, of backups that you have through the GUI. Uh, why Tiger Snapshot um, is, uh, is a, will, it will create a copy of the files as of a particular point in time, um, the starting time of when you, when you run it. Uh, it's available in two different editions of MongoDB. 
it's available in Pocono Server for MongoDB, and it's also available in MongoDB Enterprise Edition. Uh, MongoDB Enter Enterprise Edition does not document how you use it, but it's clear that there's a an aggregation pipeline operator uh, stage rather called Backup Cursor, and I assume it's pretty similar um, in that it just goes through and creates files one by one, but how it's used exactly, it's not clear. Uh, maybe it's only used by Ops Manager and Atlas, um, I'm not sure. Uh, Pocono Server MongoDB, however, on the other hand, is documented. We've added a command called create backup. Uh, this will can either save files to a local directory um, or locally or a remote server that's mounted locally, um, or you can send to an S3 destination directly. So you can use an object store or not. Uh, you run the command as a Mongo shell command. So you don't need special Unix and, uh, uh, privileges to make this. Uh, you just need some place to copy it. Okay. Uh, and uh, another solution, I think the sixth one in this list now is using Pocono Packer for MongoDB. Like Ops Manager, it requires that you store an, uh, an agent on each server. In fact, one agent for every single MongoD node, whether it's a config server MongoDB node or a shard node or a non-sharded replica set node. Uh, you should store one PBM agent service uh, for each. Uh, those agents though are only a part of the system. The other part of the system is using the PBM uh, command line tool. Uh, this Here I show an example of listing the backups you have, but other, of course you'd also use it to run the backup, um, delete old uh, backups, uh, or to begin a restore. So this is a very you know, command line system. There's no, there's no GUI part. Uh, in the kind of backup MongoDB. Okay, so those those are the six types that are available. I, I will now um, make a comparison, put them in different buckets, uh, so you can uh, choose which one you need. Okay, uh, first of all, which one do hot backups? In a sense, all of them do. Um, although the wide target snapshot method is the one that's usually marketed as being called hot backup, um, but but all of them offer you the ability to make a copy of the data without shutting the, shutting the database down. Uh, this is, with MongoDB's high availability, this is just a granted these days. Point in time restore is only available from two solutions. Um, although if you are pretty hot at doing cell, 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 shell scripting, you can, do it, you, can, you can do it yourself with a shell script too. That's also possible, but so far as it's built into a system, this is only available for Pocono backup for MongoDB um, as of version 1.3. At the time of recording this, um, Pocono version 4.3 is uh, going through QA and it should be released soon. Uh, I believe it will be out by the time this uh, is presented. Uh, MongoDB, MongoDB Ops Manager Backup has had point in time restore for a long time. So, but either of these two solutions have point in time restore, uh, which will provide consistent backups for a cluster. A cluster is, a, is an issue because uh, the different shards and the config server, um, you, the idea is to capture a snapshot at exactly the same time, uh, which is you can't do, you can't make guarantees when you have a distributed system. But there is a way to make, make their restored versions consistent. Um, again, both Pocono Backup for MongoDB and MongoDB Ops Manager do this in the same way that they can do point in time restore, uh, more or less. Uh, before we had a, before we had transactions, before we had consistent, um, uh, sorry, before we had a cluster-wide logical clock to use, uh, file, uh, either the file system snapshot or a wide tiger snapshot were considered good enough because that was without a, a shared time, um, a perfect cluster logical time to share between. Shards having slightly different times was as good as it could get. So you may as well use a file system snapshot run in parallel on all the replica sets or use a wide tiger snapshot or as long as they started very close in time, that was as good as it get. So before 4.2, those two were okay, but for 4.2 onwards, uh, you really needed the, well, the internal abilities to do a point in time and restore system. And that's the kind of backup for MongoDB um, or MongoDB opposite. Uh, Ops Manager Backup. Not that it needs to be point in time restore, just the consistency that was available in Pocono Backup MongoDB from its very first version is also enough to do that. Okay. Um, as, as for how you use it as an administrator, um, 
Well, top top right three there, you they're purely shell script. The other ones, you install them as external software. Although Mongo dump, Mongo restore is so simple, it's 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 uh, it's uh, it's debatable whether I should put that on the shell script side. Um, anyhow, there's, they, these, there's, but there are these two different families. One's you do everything with shell scripts. Uh, the other one is even though you're still using shell scripts, possibly in cron jobs to start the backups, etc., they require extra software uh, that you would install. Um, and as for where you store them, well, using object stores is a is a cheaper way and can be can be a faster way to um, uh, depending on the uh, the service you're using. Um, but but at any rate, object stores are usually cheaper and um, uh, and uh, otherwise more useful, particularly in our you know our cloud environments these days. Uh, only three um, solutions uh, support it. Uh, one is Wired Tiger Hot Backup, but only the one offered in Picona Server for MongoDB. Uh, it's, it's not available in MongoDB Enterprise. Otherwise, Picona Backup for MongoDB, a MongoDB Ops Manager can use S3 uh, as a, as a destination, S3 or Minio. Um, as for open source, there are two um, proprietary ones, Wired Tiger Hot Backup in MongoDB Enterprise Edition or MongoDB OS Manager. Otherwise, they're all open source. Okay. Lastly, let's consider what you need to choose if performance is an issue, and it usually is. Um, first of all, you've got to work out how much IO speed you've got when it comes to writing the backups. Uh, usually you've got an idea, oh, it's something, something, something. Uh, we'll find out when we try it, but you really have got, there's no way to have an idea. Is it, is, if it's acceptable or not, is it going to finish in one hour or is it going to finish in 24 hours? Uh, it could, it could be easily um, be one or the other until you sort out some factors of 10. Um, if it's, if it's 50 megabytes a second, you're going to have a bad time unless you have already have a very small amount of data. But if it's 500 megabytes a second, on the other hand, it's going to be good. You really need to work it out. Um, also, there may possibly be a network bottleneck. Probably not, but that could also get in your way. So you, you really do need to figure out how fast you can write to your backup storage like, um, location. And if it's not good, time to make sure you get a better backup storage location to use. Okay, but this, this important public service announcement aside, let's go on to uh, what we know about the different backup solutions that exist. Uh, first of all, logical, physical, physical is usually faster. With logical, um, you can avoid some file access because of, for the data that, that it is in, is in memory. Um, if you have most of your data memory, this is good. Uh, but when it comes to making a backup, uh, it can be that uh, a logical method has read amplification it will read the documents by their underscore ID order. And if the documents are small and the order of documents by which file block, block they're in is very scattered, it may read you know, a one four kilobyte uh, disk block to get one document and then read a different one to get the next document and then read a different one to get the next document. If a document is only uh, say half a kilobyte, whereas five blocks are four kilobytes, you'll have to read eight separate, um, to get through four kilobytes of logical data, you'll have to read eight, se eight separate different file blocks, uh, 32 kilobytes. Um, so you'll have, a, you'll have a read amplification of eight times. And you could easily have documents that are much smaller than that. I've seen an extreme example where it seems to though, it, by what we could tell from the metrics, it was reading a hundred times as much disk uh, because of scattered uh, disk block reads uh, as the uh, as the size of logical data. Um, so that that can be a problem with logical logical re uh, backup systems. They can do a lot of read amplification on the disk, and physical doesn't have that. It may not matter, uh, but it, if you have very small documents and the documents are very were insert, inserted in a very random fashion there could be a lot of read application, which physical will avoid. On the restore side, again, physical is usually faster. Um, with physical though, you'll be stopping and restarting nodes. Uh, so that's some manual time that, that will be required uh, to, to, to do that. Uh, logical on the other hand doesn't do that. You can, you can just restore straight into your running node. If you're happy to overwrite what you have at the moment, 
to, with the backup data, you can just restore straight into there. This is this is a, a minor time saver. Um, usually, physical snapshots restore faster. Okay. In summary, okay, if you happen to have a small database, nothing wrong with using MongoDB, MongoDump. Um, it's it, so long as you don't need point in time recovery. That is, uh, don't forget to use the op log options as you do it, as you make the backup and as you do the restore. Otherwise, you won't get a consistent uh, data view. But I'm, although I'm not going to usually use MongoDump, if you have very small data, this is quite okay. In the medium small to medium, up to medium large, physical speed is, despite what I was saying in, in the recent slides, it's unlikely to be noticeable, noticeable, noticeably faster than logical, but there are cases when it is. And you'll, you'll just have to test to find out. Um, now, when it comes to doing tests, um, if you're a cluster, just, just test with the biggest shard. You don't have to, don't have to do all of them together. See how long that takes. Um, doing, say, a, a logical method, just Mongo, Mongo dump would be fine um, compared to copying the files, say, with SCP to your backup storage location. Use your real backup storage location. Not to, don't do it to local disk. That'll be too far. That won't have a bottleneck. Um, do copy it to the real backup server. Uh, I think you'll find that uh, logical is usually not much faster than physical. Okay. Anyhow, well, once you've worked out if uh, if uh, logical is fast enough for you or not, after that, your choice depends on these features using open source or not, uh, whether you need perfect cluster consistency or not. We didn't use it before, uh, and we're not using transactions. And, and you, if your client application is not using tra transactions, um, it may not matter. But if you do, um, that's you'll have to use uh, either Pocono backup, uh, Pocono backup from MongoDB or Ops Manager. Um, uh, whether you need to use point in time restore um, and whether you're using an object store or a simple file system backup, this, these, these filter which options you can use. Okay, um, about point in time restore, don't use point, don't aim to use point in time restore if you have a high write churn. If you have updates and updates that are constantly changing documents without uh, or inserting or and then deleting documents. Um, if you have a reasonably fixed size of data that's being changed a lot, point in time restore is not good. You, it's not good for you because the op log that's created is very high. Uh, I've seen cases where many cases where the size of the op log per day is larger than the, the entire data by, database by itself. Uh, so that of course implies that the amount of storage space you need needs to be twice as large. And I've seen some cases where it's much, much larger. It, so uh, apart from the fact you need st more storage space, the backup location has to be able to accept writes much faster than, than usual. Um, it can't, because it really has to keep up in time. It can't, it can't afford to fall behind. So your backup server would need to be fast too. Also, when it comes to doing a replay to an exact point in time, an arbitrary point in time, that op, that's a huge amount of op log that will need to be replayed and it'll take a long time. So if you have high write churn, point in time uh, restore is just not for you. Uh, it won't, you won't be able to do it. Okay. Uh, lastly, uh, what if you have a really large uh, data, you have a huge amount of data per node. Um, I, for this case, um, you know, the, the amount of time it takes to copy data um, is going to be very large. Um, I, th I find so far that using an LVM file system snapshot is the easiest, but you will need to allocate extra disk space. Maybe you can do it in just one node, maybe a hidden secondary, um, but you will need one, uh, one server for a MongoDB node that has extra disk space, which will be used by the LVM volume group. Um, uh, uh, and when it comes, and if you and if you do this uh, method using the LVM file system, file system snapshot, you'll need to also catch capture some extra op log by script to um, replay uh, up to the same point in time if you have multiple shards. Um, this is the, the this is the best solution if you've got a really large amount of data per node. Um, I don't think wide tiger snapshot is suitable uh, because uh, at the end of using wide tiles snapshot, there will be a heavy impact uh, when check processing enables it again. The longer the, the snapshot takes, the bigger the amount of work to catch up on will be. Uh, so uh, I 
don't I don't want to recommend wire target snapshot as, as being equal to an LVM file system snapshot in this case. Right here. And yep, that's the end of the talk. Uh, I ran for a bit longer than I meant to. Whoops, sorry about that. But hopefully uh, you learned all you, you needed to know about the different options up to the point that let you choose which one you want to focus on. So from here, please focus on what you're going to use and uh, send us any questions if you need to. Cheers.